30, we will call this meeting to order. <laughs> TPPC, Kerncog Board. And we will start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. I own. Present. Couch. Here. <coughs> Blades. <coughs> Crump. Here. Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Here. Reina. Here. Flores. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Trujillo and Vasquez. And uh, Neil Peacock is on the line for District 9. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Yes, sir. Hi everybody, my name is Tony Renteria. I'm the program manager for the Current Actors Transportation Alliance. Um, as you guys can see, I made a, a package for you all. Um, just kind of talking to you guys a little bit about what we'll be doing uh, in February uh, in regards to being in your areas. Um, so we'll be have upcoming uh, bike rides in your areas. Again, we've been doing these now for a couple years. They're wonderful. I really hope you guys can make them out. Um, we also have a smart cycling class we'll be holding in Bakersfield late February. Uh, you know, it's a great class, it's free, and I advise anybody, all of you, to take it, or if you have maybe community leaders uh, in your areas um, that you feel might benefit from this. Again, it's a free class, it's a two-day class, and, um, you know, I think definitely, you know, again, they would benefit from, um, from taking that. Uh, also, uh, I give you some information on our street course for kids event that we'll be having in Lamont, at, in Lamont, at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, Again, you know, this program has been nothing um, but um, very meaningful uh, to us at Bike Baker Sold and the Kern Cog. And um, again, I hope you all can make it out to some of these events, and uh, we look forward to having you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. More bikes, more better. Any other public comments? Seeing none, I will move to opportunity for public comment on the consent agenda. Anybody like to make comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please. Bill Smith. Yes. <laughs> Bob Smith. Yes. Jeff Flores. Yes. Gilberto Reyna. Yes. Kathy Prout. Yes. Cindy Parra. Yes. Jim Crichton. Yes. Michael Navarro. Yes. Marshall Cryer. Yes. Malcolm Warney. Yes. John Crump. Yes. David Couch. Yes. 
and Saul Ione. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans Report District 6, Mr. Navarro. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. Uh, just get a couple of updates before I get into projects. I want to talk about Clean California real quick. I uh, did want to congratulate City of Wasco. They had an excellent groundbreaking on their project. Very well attended event. It was an honor to be there. So I want to congratulate them. Um, also, other projects kicking off our current regional transit bus shelter. That was part of the second call for Clean California for transit projects. So we've executed our, our, our agreement so they have their notice to proceed with their project. Um, the Stay Route 204 Road Diet Project, just want to give an update on that project, much anticipated. Um, that project, so the original bid was rejected. I think I may have communicated that a couple months ago. We are re-advertising it. Um, we had to remove some of the landscaping components from the project, but we're going to have our maintenance forces do that work instead, so we're not going without it. It's just that we're looking for cost savings because it came in over bid. And so we expect that product to advertise end of this month. And so you'll see construction activity starting this summer on that project Great. for the road diet. So it is moving forward. Um, the sad part about Clean California is in sun it is sunsetting. Um, so things like the, um, the, the dump days and things of that nature will be going away. Um, we are having a Clean California Community Days, which it coincides with Earth Day, uh, week of April 19th to April 22nd. Uh, it was well attended last week. A lot of nonprofits got involved and adopted certain areas for, for to uh, do litter cleanups, et cetera. So looking forward to marketing that program. Uh, for the Caltrans planning grants, that deadline for applications is due tomorrow. So just want to let you know we've had several conversations with various agencies uh, in your region as well as throughout our district. So looking for hopefully another successful um, Caltrans planning grant cycle like last year. And then also, we recently circulated our, our State Highway Operation Protection Program, the SHOP. Those comments are due um, on the 19th. I do want to thank Kern Cobb for submitting comments on our project list. We're trying to be a little more transparent with our Fix It First program and provide opportunities for our partners to comment and see what we're working on. In terms of projects, a few updates to share. Uh, old US 99 to White Land on State Route 99 Rehab Project. Uh, wrapping up that project, doing final striping. Expected completion of the road work is, is early part of next month. Then we're going to plan establishment. Uh, State Route 43, Seven Standard Road Roundabout. Currently moving through the, through the PNED project approval environmental document process. So final environmental document is being reviewed. So we expect to have that phase completed in early March. The Santa Fe Roundabout at the in chapter. So this project is in the design phase. We expect to have design completed by uh, June of this year, and then that would lead to hopefully construction starting in the spring. Uh, Stay Route 46 gap closure project. This is segment 4C. Construction continues to progress. It's estimated we're about 45% complete. Uh, did have some delays because of weather, uh, but completion of that project is scheduled for July of this year. The State Route 166 California Aqueduct Rehab Project. I don't think I've mentioned that project in, in a few months, but that project is looking to go to construction mid-2025. And we just want to do early coordination with our partners because we will have to shut down traffic on the bridge for about 90 days. Um, we expect that project to be uh, end this month ready to list to get ready for advertisements. Uh, Maricopa Highway Cap M project. Um, that project received its construction allocation in October approval CT at the CTC meeting. Uh, came in a little over budget, but we are currently working on, um, we are still getting that project funded to move forward. I would expect construction to start uh, this upcoming summer. Stay Route 9, 119 in Taft, the left turn channelization project. That project is wrapping up. We're about 98% complete um, and should be having that project completed hopefully by this month. The Stay Route 119 uh, Pumpkin Center from Ash Road from Stay, uh, to Stay Route 119 one and 99 as a pavement rehabilitation project um, work on design right away phase we expect that project to ready to list by the end of May uh, stay route 223 184 roundabout that project has been open to traffic still button up some punch list items but I expect to have that project uh, totally complete by February 2nd uh, the morning drive uh, rehab project is a stay route 184 uh, just north of Edison Highway uh, to Chase Avenue um, that project was contract was awarded to Griffith Company. And expect to complete uh, construction to start in May of this year. With that, that completes my updates. I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you, Mr. Smith. I just noticed on 58, remember I brought up uh, some issues over there mm -hmm. at the, on the westbound lanes mm -hmm. coming into by Tower Line mm -hmm. Road. Looks like they're, they've got those addressed, and thank you. Good, But good. they've got some signs up for construction. Prior to that, they're all covered. Is there more coming? I'm not sure about any additional project. I, I can look into that and respond to you it's, accordingly. It's, but it's a, a lot of signs, but... Like place some signage and cover them, and like pre-construction? It's coming up something. Okay. Uh, it's not urgent, but uh, what I had requested or just to look into, it's all been taken care of. Okay. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Michael, I um, have a question regarding the uh, J Street and Highway 46 roundabout in Wasco. Uh, do you know what the status of that is? I'm going to have to look that up. I didn't come prepared to talk about that project, okay. but let me look into it and I'll um, yeah, let me know, respond please. with you. Thank you. Any other <laughs> comments? I want to say thank you again for the Hawk signal on Union and 8. That's I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. But um, we talked about the day a little bit. Uh, Director Akimi was on the meeting. I did mention a, a couple months ago we are looking at another location um, on 204 and 10th Street. Um, we are we are taking a pause. We're going to revisit and look at the accident data. And what was communicated today when I talked with our, our, our safety individuals, the plan is to meet with the city of Bakersfield. I think we're looking to get a little feedback on how they feel about the one on 204 and 8th Street, how it's working. I think the one at 10th Street does serve a lot of pedestrian traffic. I think there's a market right there, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, so I think uh, the plan is to meet with uh, Mr. Strakalus and, and talk about that opportunity and see if uh, if the city supports looking into another one at 10th Street. But that that is what we're, we were previously recommending, but just want to confirm with our partners that that's their desire and that they're happy with and people are utilizing the one at 8th Street. Well, I'll tell you, this part of the city supports it. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, District 9. Caltrans. Very good. Um, I'm going to um, put in the chat our project uh, delivery uh, website. You can find out all the information that you need on all of the projects in our region. Um, as I mentioned, this is Maggie Ritter, who is our regional planning branch chief. Uh, she supervises all of our regional planners, including Rick Brands, who's our regional liaison for uh, Eastern Kern County. Um, so my updates are relatively brief. Uh, we got a couple projects moving into zero phase, advancing uh, into the project delivery um, pipeline. Freeman Gulch uh, safety improvements project and Rosamond two project. Um, over in Freeman Gulch, uh, we're widening shoulders, adding other safety features, including rumple strips, median barriers, uh, widening the Freeman Gulch bridge and repairing and upgrading uh, drainage um, all along straight route 14. For the Rosamond rehab project, we're upgrading existing pavement on all of the travel lanes uh, on and off ramps and shoulders, extending culverts, replacing traffic signals, up upgrading middle beam guardrail, and, and so forth and so on, loop detectors in the whole nine yards. Um, both of those projects are moving into uh, zero phase uh, early next year. Uh, we also just completed the current dig outs and slab replacement project that was finished back in December. Uh, and that was on State Route 58 to repair multiple winter storm damage points um, and uh, upgrade the, the, the pavement that, that uh, suffered a really rough winter. Uh, we're also um, constructing, going to construction and, and hope to be completed in February with our Tehachapi maintenance project, uh, maintenance station project. So a new maintenance station over in Tehachapi is going to hopefully provide more robust support for our maintenance crew to provide timely response um, on, on uh, all kinds of needs on State Route 58 and this the surrounding region. Um, one other thing that I want to put on your radar is a project that we have moving into the project delivery pipeline, which is uh, a capital maintenance and complete street project over in uh, the Golden Hills uh, neighborhood um, of State Route 202. Uh, we're currently working on scoping out that project, developing a cost estimate, delivery schedule, and making sure that we're clear on the scope of work for that project so we can get ready for community outreach. So uh, stay tuned for public surveys and engagement uh, as that project comes to fruition. Those are the brief notes I have for you. I guess one other thing to, to touch on, just to kind of put on your radar as a long lead planning issue for uh, Eastern Kern is uh, we're working with the local stakeholders, uh, including the COG on emergency evacuation planning for the greater Tehachapi region. And this is something that we don't wanna get caught with our pants down in the event of any kind of major catastrophic wildlife uh, or wildfire. Uh, or other similar natural disaster events that we've seen elsewhere in the state. So um, stay tuned for more on that as we work with stakeholders, including the local fire council, 
uh, helping to become a little bit more proactively prepared for uh, situations such as that in the future. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for District 9? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. And Ms. Ritter. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. Just have a few quick items on this agenda. Next week, I'll be attending the California Transportation Commission meeting, which will be held in Modesto. The CTC will be holding their meetings on Thursdays and Fridays uh, for the first time starting this year. And this year, they will hold two meetings in 2024 in the Central Valley, one in Modesto and one in Bakersfield in October. Um, over the past couple of months, it's been a couple of months since we have met, we've continued to work with uh, Caltrans and others, including the city of Bakersfield, on the missing two connectors at State Route 99 and 58. Uh, 204 and Union Avenue is still on our radar, and I sent a couple of you uh, links to a brand new camera that is part of that uh, project with a high-resolution camera. So if you want to see what's going on on Union Avenue at 8th Street, you could see it in, in high resolution, thanks to Cal Caltrans now. Great. I want to uh, thank uh, Supervisor Couch and Chairman Smith for engaging in a uh, couple of meetings on 7th Standard and 43 that have uh, essentially saved that project from, from dropping out. Uh, and also, I want to thank um, the county CAO, Jim Zervis, for personally engaging in multiple meetings. Um, if if ev all parties uh, deliver what they uh, have committed to, uh, we're likely to see that project get funding in, a, in just a couple of, of years. Um, I was gl glad to hear, and I used uh, State Route 33 as an example. Supervisor Couch, you've been involved with that project. That um, just because a, a project starts with a uh, initial scope doesn't mean we can't change it, and um, I'm glad to say that the State Route 33 project is is being delivered. There'll be a uh, another CTC action for uh, a little bit more money, uh, but we we knew the shoulders were going to cost a little bit more money. But it will that project with the new shoulders on it will no doubt save lives. The CTC, Michael, you were on that meeting today. I think that the CTC um, additional funds vote will likely take place in March for 33. I, I'll get back to you. Uh, and uh, I'm not, I, I don't recall where uh, the March meeting is, but it, it's, it's not close. But I will be attending it. It's in San, San Jose. If, if, if any of you ever want to attend uh, CTC, I attend most meetings, and I plan on attending the March meeting for s several reasons. You're welcome to come with me or go on your own, or you can also watch the meetings. And if you want to, you can comment uh, online, but you have to register in advance. Uh, met earlier today about State Route 46. Project is on schedule, as Michael uh, mentioned, continue to um, talk and have an update, and I want to thank uh, Senator Grove's staff attended our, our, uh, our quarterly meeting today and is actively engaged in uh, making sure that project stays on, on schedule. Uh, we also had uh, staff also attended State Route, Route 119 stakeholder meeting about long-term planning on State Route 119. And finally, I want to thank Supervisor Couch and Caltrans. Um, Supervisor Couch and I and several um, other people, including the CHP, attended a ribbon cutting event in the past month at two new roundabouts in Kern County, both on State Route 184, one at 184 and 223, one at 184 and Sunset. Um, one was triggered by fatal accidents, the other was uh, also a safety project, but not necessarily triggered by safety, uh, by fatal accidents. And some of you r may remember, we've gone back and forth on on the one just outside of, around, 
of Arvin, but I've heard nothing but good things from regular motorists, truckers, uh, elected officials about how the roundabouts have, have been working. They uh, reduce queues almost immediately, keep traffic flowing, and for the most part, uh, improve safety. Uh, subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we will adjourn that meeting and open up the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Roll call is the same. And public comment rules are the same. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comments. Any comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none. Motion. Second. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Couch. Yes. Um, Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Um, Flores. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. And Phil Smith. Yes. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just a few comments. Um, it's with a, a, a heavy heart. Uh, I know I've shared this with most of you, but uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, Cheryl Wegman passed away on December 25th. Uh, Cheryl served on the current COG board since 2001. She served over 20 years. Uh, Cheryl was also recognized by former Assemblyman Rudy Salas in 2018 as Assembly District 32 Woman of the Year. Uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, Thank you. Member statements. I think Mr. Ione had some statements. Thank you, Chair. Um, this will be some, be a little bit, I don't think it should be long, but it might be. But uh, As Mayor of the I proposed the implementation of a half cent sales tax in Kern County. Measures have been adopted in 24 self-help counties across California. This initiative is pivotal for generating funds for vital transportation projects, benefiting both smaller communities and larger communities throughout Kern County. A transportation sales tax would be consistent and predictable revenue. A, a half cent sales tax would provide cities with reliable source of revenue to repair local streets, addressing some of the most pressing of infrastructure needs. Matching funds from state and federal projects. This tax will also enable Kern County to provide necessary matching funds for state and federal transportation projects, enhancing our ability to secure and leverage additional funding sources. A model of success is, if we look to our north, is Tulare County. To our north, Tulare County Measure R dedicates 50% of their revenue to regional projects, 35% to their local projects, and 15 for bike, transit, and environmental projects. This measure has been funded significant improvements along 99, including 13 widenings, four interchanges, and three bridges. The current challenges in Kern County, in contrast to Kern County, particularly areas like Delano McFarland and uncorporated, uncorporated, uh, incorporated regions faces challenges with interchanges not meeting current standards, struggling and keeping up with the growth. This situation is mirrored in East Kern and other areas along state highways. A self-county coalition model, stable and reliable funding, currently adopted by 24 counties, illustrates the success of local sales tax measure funding transportation projects. These counties are projected to fund approximately $194 billion in transportation infrastructure, showcasing the effectiveness, effectiveness of such initiatives. Accountability and local involvement. The SHCC offers a framework of accountability and public participation, ensuring the funds are used effectively and transparently and funding and controlled by local jurisdiction and not by being a self help county, we're, lo we're losing out in SB1 and gas tax that, are, that Kern County is currently paying. 
uh, an anticipated benefits, job creation, economic boost, uh, reinvesting local t uh, tax uh, dollars into transportation projects that will enhance the community. In conclusion, I propose this half cent sales tax in Kern County will not only address immediate infrastructure challenges, but will also lay the groundwork for sustainable ec economic growth and community development. This measure will, will benefit our smaller communities, disadvantaged communities, ensuring equitable progress across the county. I uh, want to direct staff to research and poten potentially becoming a self-help county and bring back a staff report to the, bo uh, to the board as soon as possible. Thanks, uh, Chairman Smith, for allowing me to speak on this item that would benefit Kern County tremendously. Thank you, Mayor. Any other member comments? Councilman, I have one. Yes, Supervisor Flores. Thank you. Um, please indulge me. I don't know if this was the appropriate time or if it was last member comments on the last agenda. But for staff, a quick question. I'm getting a lot of um, citizen inquiries about 178 at Canteria. A lot of students um, go through a crosswalk on a state highway to get to Cato and to get to Fletcher to get to the ballparks and to the dog park. Is there anything in the horizon, like a, like a bridge or pedestrian bridge or any, any safety measures uh, that you know about? Or, or uh, Supervisor Flores, that, that is a state highway. Um, so uh, I, I, after, after I give you what I know about it, yeah. Michael can take Thank it you. from there. But there, there are no plans that I know of for either a crosswalk or a pedestrian overcrossing there. Okay. Because I mean, there's an existing crosswalk, but I just don't know. I mean, I'm not an engineer. A, a crosswalk at a busy state highway seems incompatible. Right. And, and I, I'm aware of that location. I think our, our staff has gone out there to walk with individuals. I don't know if they're from, from county staff or who they're with to kind of look at the location. Um, in similar situations where they're on a state highway system, you're right, you know, the crosswalk could be concerning. It seems a lot of issues with during the pickup drop-off time, obviously, yeah. with the school. So we've, we've, in similar strategies, have been working with the school district about drop-off pickup strategies, how we manage traffic during that peak time. Um, typically, for a conventional highway, we usually don't see pedestrian overcrossings. Usually, it's more for grade-separated facilities. Um, similar examples where we've seen pedestrian overcrossings over conventional highways, people don't generally use them because of the duration to go over it. I mean, so you're better off trying to do something to make the, the roadway safer. I mean, for two lane, inter two, lane cross two lane segments, we do things like rectangular rapid flashing beacons as a treatment. For the four lane sections, we do things like we've done it in like Bakersfield with a hawk signal um, for the pedestrian, okay. pedestrian hawk. So since this is two, two eastbound and two westbound, could, could we look at flashing beacons? So two eastbound, two westbound, four lanes, then or maybe a hawk signal. Typically, yeah, I, I, I would defer to my traffic engineer, but I could talk to him a little more about it. But just to, yeah, just to start. Yeah, the similar. Process. We've done, you know, the, the, the RFBs or rectangular rapid flashing beacons are, are have been very successful with two lane roadways, one yeah. in each direction. When you get to four lanes, then you start thinking about the hawk right. treatments, which are quite a bit more expensive. Um, not impossible, but yeah. I, I think probably a follow up conversation involving staff and maybe the school district okay. to brainstorm we're, we're doing some things in i'll say in tulare county exeter where they have a high school along a four-lane conventional highway and we're doing some they've done some engagement with the school and we've done some feasibility work to look at potential treatments along that corridor so we can have similar conversations okay. with with i think typically it's good to bring the school district in because a lot of it is how they manage sometimes it's you know they might have a good plan for student pickup but then you see parents doing what's easiest for them for getting the They'll park across the street to avoid the queue in front of the school. Then you have the kids running across the street. Okay. So you're yeah, happy to go out you. there and observe again and, and have that conversation, though. You know, thank you. I, I welcome your professional expertise and, and, and looking at talking with all the parties involved. So I'll get with you offline. Absolutely. And, and set something up just to start the conversation. Happy to. Yeah. Can we out on staff, I have like a, a senior active transportation planner that I, I pretty much task them with these issues because obviously state highways are going through a lot of our smaller communities and unincorporated areas as well. So, um, no, happy, happy to work with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other member comments? I have a quick one. Yes. Real quick. Um, I just wanted to thank the county, uh, county Public Works and traffic um, right there at Pico and Oswell, I believe in uh, in Supervisor Flores' um, district there. Uh, they put uh, speed bumps in front of Compton Junior High, and it has really reduced the speed going through that area. And speaking of 
you know, kids that are going to school. There's an elementary school and a junior high right there. And it it is just, it's, it's just asphalt and paint, and it's cheap, and it, it, it calms traffic down. It makes those people go slower, and I just want to thank the county for continuing to look at places where they can put, install speed bumps like that. It, it really makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member comments? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned in memory of former board member Cheryl Wegman.